If we lose all of the ice in Greenland, which will take more than a century, but it's already happening gangbusters now, we're moving that direction, we will have 20 feet of sea level rise. There's no seawall that will protect you from that. If we lose all the ice in Antarctica, and I mean the continental ice, it's 200 feet. What happens if you lose the main travel route from Boston northward? You know, what does that do to the economy of New Hampshire and Maine and Vermont? You know, so that will reshape coastlines, countries, jurisdictions, etc. We can't afford for that to happen. If we proceed on the path that we are on now, which is going to lead to something around four or five degrees of warming, we call that business as usual, we will suffer a catastrophe with many facets, one of which is financial. Financial sector's role is to look forward and anticipate changes in society, and sustainability definitely offers a lot of risks and opportunities that investors need to consider. Our firm really focuses on investing in the risks and the opportunities associated with the transition to a more sustainable global economy. It will be absolutely necessary over the next few decades to transition from an economy fueled by coal and oil uh, to an economy uh, fueled by new technologies, by energy efficiency, by renewable energy sources. It will be vital that we transition from an economy that is fundamentally depletive and generates a, a lot of waste to one that is more circular. It is also really imperative that we understand that this transition from an industrial age economy to a sustainable economy could potentially unleash the greatest period of economic growth in the history of the planet. The estimates of the financial losses and economic losses to climate change, they're all quite high. So we're looking at anywhere from two to 20% of GDP in perpetuity by 2100. That's, if, I mean, that's an economic loss, but that's bound to affect financial markets. And financial markets are beginning to really understand that better. We have a lot of value at risk, a lot of assets at risk. We can't predict when it will happen. You have to be prepared for it to happen and to price those risks accurately in order to invest in a way that protects you, that is resilient to those risks. We are facing a world that is, has a lot more potential for conflict in it, and that is never good for financial markets either much less for people. It's very important if we're going to address climate change that we don't sit back and think government's gonna do all the work for us. In fact, in many parts of the globe, government's not doing enough. So it's imperative that business corporations and capital markets be part of the solution. Um, we think investors can profit from investing in those businesses. We also think investors need to look at the risks associated with climate change. There's regulatory risk that will certainly affect energy companies. There's physical risk that companies have to face now because of storms and floods and hurricanes and so forth that can disrupt businesses. And there's what we might call reputation risk or brand risk to companies that aren't on the right side of this issue. But on climate, I think increasingly we're seeing that younger investors uh, want to invest in companies that are going to do something about it, and they don't want to invest in companies that are making it worse. Yeah, so for the PAX World Global Environmental Markets Fund, we have a series of impact metrics. These are born out of the fact that the whole strategy is geared towards companies that are providing solutions to environmental and resource problems. So we're looking to be able to quantify the extent to which the companies in the portfolio deliver the impact metrics that we're talking about. Every company that we invest in goes through a very scrutinized uh, A-list introduction, we call it, i.e. we look at the quality of the management, quality of the product, business model, of course the E, S and G uh, quality and criteria. So ESG principles, environmental, social, governance principles affect the way we invest in, in three different ways. First of all, it helps us target specific areas of the economy that are providing solutions to environmental problems. Secondly, when you're looking at an investment, make sure that you consider environmental, social and governance risk issues when thinking about how that company is run. And finally, when you have your investments, make sure you're engaging with management teams to understand how their strategies and businesses are evolving and how they are factoring in environmental, social and governance issues. And so when you integrate that, then you can build a portfolio for the PAX World Global Environmental Markets Fund, 
consisting of close to 50 names. All these names are in the portfolio because they provide an environmental solution. So in terms of how the global marketplace is responding to the climate challenges, climate emergency that we're facing, I think you can consider it in four main areas. The companies, the stakeholders and shareholders, the consumers, and then governments. If you start with the underlying companies, I'm extremely encouraged with the progress that has been made in delivering cleaner, more efficient products at much more competitive prices. In terms of shareholders, we're starting to see more activity, more focus, more engagement with companies, encouraging them to target capital towards avoiding some of the risks and looking for opportunities. In terms of consumers, I think the millennial generation is starting to, to change perspectives on climate and reflecting that in the way they consume, the way they think about travel, consumption, energy, water. And then finally, governments. I think that's really where there's the potential for a step change. And indeed, governments can, can respond to a lot of the changes that they're feeling from their voters. But what we really need with regard to climate change is a consistent policy regulations across the world to really encourage this transition to a lower carbon economy. Over the next 10 years, I expect us to become much more sophisticated in understanding the shape of physical risk, how that might affect our investments and how we might engage with the companies or the municipalities or other establishments that we invest in and how to make themselves more resilient. And I think there will be a lot more diligence, you know, sort of devoted to, okay, well, how do we get resilient and where are the places that are disappearing and how do we leave them planfully and gracefully rather than, you know, running away, you know, as the ship sinks. Investing in solutions rather than investing in the problem is essentially investing in the next economy, not the last one. It's investing in the future, not the past. It's investing in this transition from an industrial age economy to a more sustainable economy. And it's just simply smarter investing.